Hello everybody and welcome back to... Well, it's not to anything really, because today we're going to be talking about a bit of a controversial subject surrounding the Jurassic Park slash world toy community. And that is the most recent uh, Mattel Kickstarter. It's not really a Kickstarter, they call it Mattel Creations, but for all intents and purposes it's a Kickstarter with various goals that unlock different rewards and the rewards being just a better thing that you back. So, I saw this not too long ago. Uh, this is what they call the Jurassic World The Gates crowdfund. Uh, well, I don't know why they call it Jurassic World The Gates when it's got nothing to do with Jurassic World. Already off to a strong start. Um, and basically, I, I saw this not too long ago and it was just mind-boggling to me because for a start it was originally only for US customers so everyone else in the rest of the world and if you if you have anything to do with the Jurassic toy community you'll know that America or the US because you know Mattel's based in the US I'm pretty sure anyway uh, <laughs> uh, they get a lot of the toys that the rest of the world doesn't me being from the UK and then living in Japan now uh, I find it very hard to find certain toys uh, around because they just don't exist. Now Mattel have sent me things in the past and as of sp speaking and recording this right now I do have a thing, a box waiting for me in Japan that Mattel have sent me. I highly doubt it's this though. Uh, the image shows a Ford Explorer, a Jurassic Park gate with electric fence, some of the um, the little signage that you can get of like the Raptor pens, the Gallimimus, you know, some nice authenticity sort of things you can have. Lex, Tim and as well as a goat and not only you know this is Jurassic Park but there is a T-Rex here but you might be thinking well that looks like not Rexy it's green well that's because this is the book T-Rex not from Jurassic Park but from the lost world so already I'm kind of thinking why is that here <laughs> okay so let's just have a look so we're celebrating Jurassic Park's 30th anniversary with awe inspiring crowdfunding it starts with the enormous fan demanded motorized entry gates and a first ever Ford Explorer number 5 so if you know Jurassic Park there was two explorers one was 05 and one was 04 I'm assuming all of the ones that they made so far have been 04 so this one's 05 difference being the number. <laughs> uh, no expenses have been spared on recreating the details and the collector level execution extends to all the extras you can unlock from each tier. Say the magic word, fund all the extras and return with us to a time when dinosaurs ruled the earth. Sounds great on paper. Now, already they need 5,000 in order to achieve I think funding. Like if this gets 5,000 backers, which actually they do call them backers, then it will go into production. But what do you get for your 300 pound? Now it could be different in dollars. If it's 300 dollars, you're actually cheaper. Now you get a Ford Explorer, you get the electronic gates, and that's it. This, this one right, you see the T-Rex? You don't get. That, that, that car you get you get the car and you get the gates uh, now let's if we have a look at the gate it's well done it's it's got like an embossed Jurassic Park logo it has the flames that are some sort of you know clear plastic that might have light bulbs around it. if we look at the back you've got a speaker so I'm assuming that it might play the Jurassic Park theme tune uh, you know when you open it you can actually charge it I'm assuming because there's a couple of different plugs there there's an on and off switch and also a little bit of level of detail you got Dennis Nedry's you know when he sort of like over overhauled it to manual power and then just drove through it uh, it would be cool if that worked but um, if I'm gonna be honest it looks kind of shoddy <laughs> it looks like it's been vacuum folded and then just vacuum molded and they just kind of put a little bit of paint on it there you go now as far as the Explorer goes we have a quick look at that yeah, that, that's very true to the Jurassic Park Explorer that we've seen in the movies. You've got uh, some details. You've got the tour program that's been printed onto the plastic as well as some extra detail there. And as you can very clearly see, only 1,316 people have pledged to it. Me not being one of them. And we'll get into that and reasons why in a second. So overall, what are you getting for your money? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. At, at 6,000, the thing is 5,000 is the biggest milestone they need to make. 
Um, then it's 6,000, which gives you an electrocution or post electrocution Tim figure um, and two enclosure fences. So f <laughs> it's just, it's just mind boggling. So this fence that you see, this thing, I mean, we can't really see it. it must be, if we scroll down, there we go. We can see a better version of it. You've got the, the gates opening there. Um, stay in the car. There's a better shot. I should have just scrolled to these, my bad. Um, and there's the fence. Now the fence, it, it, it's, I don't know what it's made out of. It looks like it's made out of some sort of, like an actual metal cable, which is interesting. Um, the fence itself also has lights. Uh, Tim doesn't fly off it, it, it <laughs> the way they've shown it, but it looks like it does have some sort of light uh, flashing. The only thing is, this doesn't look anything like the lights that flashed in the original. Anyway, and then the biggest one you want to unlock, I assume, is the book T-Rex from The Lost World. Now, I don't really know too much about the, the model or the animatronic that they used when it comes to The Lost World, but I have the only reason why this isn't Rexy is because we've had five million Rexies before. So in order to maybe get us to, you know, want to buy the kit, um, they're giving us the book T-Rex, which we've wanted for a while. In fact, we did get it ages ago, I think, in a legacy set. I could be wrong, um, but uh, I mean, this, it has better articulation, more articulation, a higher level of detail. It's very reminiscent of, hold on, I'll go get it. Ugh, this T-Rex, this being, Oh, the, the big daddy of the Lost World playset. I mean, you had the RV, of course, but this thing, oh, it was gorgeous. It's, all, like, it's almost 100% rubber, except for the arms and the uh, legs, which you can see a very clear cut for the plastic there. But you know, you could open its mouth to do whatever you wanted it to do. It would eat something, it'd eat the guy that came with it, and you could fish it out of its belly there. It was also electronic, obviously, what's inspired this coloring, because I don't really know if the book T-Rex had a defined color to it in the movies. Kenner, that's it. I was trying to think of who, who made this. For Kenner, they decided to go with this lovely color scheme, and Mattel have faithfully recreated it all from the tiger stripes down the back to the, the tiger stripes there. But in terms of this set, it doesn't really make too much sense. And let's get into that. So for 300, 300 pound, you're getting, at, at the moment you're not getting anything because it's not getting funded, but you're getting the gate and you're also getting the explorer. Now let's say, oh, let me tell you why that's a terrible idea. Not too long ago, we got the Explorer. <laughs> so it, it, it boggles the mind. So here, here is the Explorer. I mean, I've unboxed these. You can find this on my channel, but it is almost exactly the same Explorer that came out with freaking Tim. And this Tim is very good quality. The jacket, the face, everything about this is top notch. So I'm assuming they're just using this and changing the head sculpt. And I mean, if you don't own a Tim and you don't own the Explorer, there's no reason for you to back this 300 pound project when you can buy this or, you know, you can probably find it on eBay or secondhand or somewhere. It exists. Now, the biggest differences, or should I say the similarities, are that they didn't have the paint applications for the windows. They'd be more accurate because they've added the black trim around the windows and stuff, but this really isn't something that begs the extra money because you can just get a paintbrush and go <laughs> as you see me do when I painted the friggin colossal giganotosaurus's nails because they didn't paint them. Um, so what else do you get? Well you actually get the uh, pelican briefcase that the flares and the searchlight were in. Now I don't even know if this thing opens in the boot. It, it shows it but that's about it. Also, as you can tell, this is an 04, and that one's gonna be an 05. Um, as far as interior in the front goes, well, it's it's verbatim the same. Okay, so they've painted the uh, side mirrors. They've actually added an in you know a rear view mirror onto the um, the actual car itself. But as far as the the screen goes and the dash, they've kept that all the same. They've painted it to be more accurate. They've actually printed a tour program screen onto it. But for all intensive purposes, this guy right here with its opening doors, its amazing paint application with its fading, uh, you know, even the lights on the front, they haven't changed in this one. Yes, they've got the BF Goodridge all-terrain TAs. You know, this new one has, this one doesn't. But to a kid, it's really only gonna be a collector that's gonna notice those differences. And if we're a collector, 
you might as well just paint it and save yourself the cost. Speaking of what else you get, you get the Jurassic Park gate that, you know, opens. That in itself is very good. I can't see a reason to knock that other than, you know, you could probably find if you wanted a Jurassic Park gate on eBay or other secondhand shops. You know, where someone's traded in the original Jurassic Park Kenner compound and you got a gate with that. Um, and, you know, like I said, when it comes to Tim, we've already had Tim. All, all you're getting for the uh, the backer reward, what is it? At 6,000 backers, your extra 300. You know, if, if this is fully funded, even then it's still a stretch to say is it worth 300 because I don't know if it is because you've already we've already got Tim we've already got the Explorer we have a gazillion T-Rexes I, I don't know how like yes it's it's the book T-Rex it's paint application looks different but as far as the head sculpt goes maybe it's a little bit different I I'm not really gonna notice yes there's more articulation for the arms but there's been so many of these turtleneck, you know, T-Rexes that I'm not really going to notice the difference. And if I wanted to, if I really wanted to, I could paint this T-Rex to look like that. <laughs> In fact, that would be a good project, wouldn't it? I've got all my paints. I'll paint Warhammer. I should probably like, okay, let's, let's paint this. Let's see if I can do a better job than the, uh, you know, or as close to as the Mattel and save myself the money. The only real exclusives here are the electric fence, which we can see on this image, actually just cuts off. What? So it's not like, you know, you can string them all together. For some reason, they've cut it diagonal. So you can't even link the fences together if you wanted to make a full compound. Not that you would, but if you had spent thousands and you got two links of these fences, you might be able to make a fully, you know, working the blinks and stuff or fence compound. But if I'm honest, I don't think you'd be able to do that because the reason why this, this Jurassic Park gate has the bottom bit here with that, you know, the other connection, I think is to do with the electric fences. I think you plug in the electric fences to that and that's how they work. I don't think the electric fences have their own outlet or charge. I think that's probably why they are, you know, cut to the gate. So already thinking about using the electric fences to make a compound or put them somewhere else, have them blink. I think you need that Jurassic Park gate there in order to make them blink. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I don't know. Anyway, your real exclusives, if we're going to be honest, are Lex and the goat because we have not had a Lex figure. So I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> this is targeted exclusively towards collectors. Let's be honest, because a bit of plastic like this is all a kid needs. They don't need realistic realism. They don't need a flashing light. Their imagination takes over. It's almost like where, you know, as an adult, we're having to pay extra to fill in the void that our imagination can't do anymore. <laughs> if we're honest, people who are collecting these sorts of things have imagination anyway. <laughs> So we don't need to spend an extra 100, 200, 300 pound them flashing lights or a car with black window trims on it. So in conclusion, is it worth the 300? No, I don't think so. And I'm not the only one. It shows that pretty much everybody else has the same idea. That's why it has not been backed. If they had not released the Ford Explorer, uh, Tim, and a million and one T-Rexes beforehand, I don't think the paint application to turn a T-Rex into the book, an exclusive Lex and Goat, even, you know, that's not guaranteed, uh, is worth it. Unfortunately, I think this is gonna be one of the first Mattel creations to go extinct. And maybe this is, something that they really need to reconsider. I think in this video I've laid out all my critiques, but if I was to, you know, be head of Mattel and if I was to put myself in their shoes and think about a project that would have been the strongest to start with, honestly, the RV from The Lost World. You've already got the T-Rex book. You just needed to make the RV because apart from the compound, which it seems though they've got tunnel vision and they're just focused on the first movie, Lost World, you should have done the RV. You should have made it electronic, just like the original Kenner, but made it 
way more. You could have done so much with the interior. You could have lit up those computers. You could have made it look absolutely gorgeous. And putting that book T-Rex in there would have made sense. I feel like they've completely missed out on an opportunity there. But I understand why they did this. This, from a marketing standpoint, and um, the popularity. You know, you see all the numbers. Dress Park, the most popular film. Just get the fence. Get the electrified Tim. You're like recreating iconic scenes. But obviously they ran out of ideas. You, what you could have done is either done the RV, because you've got the book T-Rex, you just chuck that in there, or the visitor center. I'm assuming in order to cut costs, they repurposed molds and stuff that they've already had in the past, already made, pre-made, like Tim, like the Ford Explorer, and still charged out the wazoo for products that we've already gotten. Anyway, guys, this is, you know, I'm back in the UK for a little bit, and... We're gonna get back to toy unboxings. Uh, I, I will do toy unboxings when I get back to Japan. I just still need to set up the space properly. Um, and it will look great, I, I promise. But now that I'm here, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to see just what Mattel has released or just generally have fun. But anyway, guys, if you enjoyed the video, leave a leave a comment. Uh, tell me what your thoughts are because, you know, us as a, you know, if it wasn't for us Jurassic toy enthusiasts, we wouldn't have gotten all these amazing toys. We wouldn't be complaining. You know, if, if we were still stuck with Hasbro and Mattel just came to us with this amazing project, we would have backed it yeah a hundred percent but we have kind of been spoiled with mattel they've given us so many good things that now that they're giving us kind of a similar standard we're not happy we want better <laughs> anyway guys if you enjoyed the video leave a like and until next time i'll see you guys later oh bye bye